Hey everyone, in this video we're gonna be breaking down the following typical themes for the King's Indian attack. How to take over the initiative by going Queen E1 against the Bishop G4 lines, how to react against the super aggressive H5 push, and at the end of the video we will be tackling the standard Queenside Fianchero lines. So we're getting the white pieces and uh, gonna be starting out with the King's Indian attack, just going for the Fianchero and... Looks like our opponent wants to play, which is always good news. And C, depending on what he plays, we'll try to adapt. So we see bishop g4, which is actually maybe a very principled and respectable line with h6. I think what the opponent does so far is actually all according to the book, except this h6 move that I'm not so sure of, but it also can't be that terrible. I'm gonna play knight e2, queen e1, e4. That's sort of the plan. So I could also go for the double fianchero just by playing b3, bishop b2. I have options. This is also tempting. Playing for e4. Question is, do you guys want like a double fianchero? I have a feeling like going for the double fianchero might be a little bit too slow. Even though it's definitely doable, I think we're gonna go for the more aggressive approach. Just by going e4 directly and then uh, ideas to go a3 and try to hunt that bishop. Maybe knight h4 even. So yeah, e4, threatening to fork. This is a really typical motive if you're playing in this kind of ratings. I think you're gonna be winning a lot of pieces based on this uh, motive. Probably not gonna happen in this game, but just letting you know that's actually happening. Especially when the bishop is on f5, because they have to move it and boom, there you win the piece with uh, e5. So you have to react against that. I think maybe simply moving the bishop back would be best. I think going e5 is kind of weakening, especially after knight c4, hitting the e5 pawn, also weakening the d5 square. So I think that should perhaps be best. That is also reasonable, but I think I'm gonna go for the same e5, combine it with maybe queen e4 perhaps, hitting both bishop and uh, the b7 pawn. Also have ideas though, get a knight over or via e4. I think like queen there. It's kind of principal because if I can get my queen to b7 then I think we might actually be winning material. So yeah, I'm gonna play queen e4, hitting both uh, these pieces and the thing is, is kind of has to play bishop there we take and then either collect the rook or the knight. I think that's actually pretty clever. I mean, best for him would be to just give up the bishop pair and take. We'll have to take back with a knight, defending the pawn, but we're already, uh, yeah, clearly better. Threatening knight takes on e5, could play bishop f4, he's got some g5 ideas, pushing the pawn, but also maybe do rook e1, trying to make an argument that this is not such a big threat. Could also go queen there, by the way, it's also interesting. Yeah, I think I like queen move for some reason, like, if they go knight e5, I wanna go queen g7 and... In case of short castle, we have this bishop takes on h6 motive. And if he plays g6, that feels a bit too weakening to me. I don't know. Maybe g6 is like a good move. Kind of doubt that though. But I think it's a must here. I think they have to play g6. And on g6, probably you have to sacrifice the e5 pawn. Okay, so knight e5. I think this is actually pretty good for me after queen captures, hitting the rook, and then, yeah. Perhaps he wanted to trick me with bishop e5. Well, first of all, I've got a queen to g4 type of move, and second of all, I can mid bishop e5 with takes, intermezzo, and then we can just uh, collect the bishop. So, goes rook f8, and you can just collect that pawn, threatening queen takes on f8. Yeah, and moves such as queen e7, I think we can generally just uh, take on f8. Could actually even take on c6 if I want to. I'm just going for the winning end game. Okay, let's just uh, simplify everything. Just trade as many pieces as we can and go for the winning end game with the extra exchange plus uh, a pawn. So there should be no counterplay for my opponent generally. And I'm gonna be taking the queen next. Oh, he didn't look. That was kind of strange. <laughs> and the opponent also finds the resign button, so we get the first game in. And we're getting the white pieces, gonna try out uh, another King's Indian attack. If opponent decides to make a move, of course. And we see d5, gonna be going for the Fianchero, and uh, combining it with short castle in the near future, most likely. Okay, we see e6, just going for the normal setup. I think I'm gonna stick to the queen e1 plan, but we see an h5 move. And the way I'm gonna be reacting against this, I think I'm just gonna be playing h3 with the idea that, well, kind of expecting him to go back. And then when h4 gets played, 
I just want to sidestep it with g4. But also in case of bishop takes, I wanted to say can take and maybe keep the same idea. Or could even take with a pawn and do g4. But on bishop takes, just going to be cashing in the bishop. Do not take with a knight because of g5. Just going to be taking this way. Okay, I mean, don't have to grab that pawn, but I thought why not? <laughs> maybe it's not the smartest idea of all time, but uh, okay, opponent like really <laughs> going all out on the attack here. He doesn't know that with a fianchetto bishop there is no mate. Okay, we still need to keep an eye on this because I always find uh, find a way to give some unnecessary counterplay, but I have a feeling just by doing this, <laughs> there should be nothing for my opponent. Fianchero Bishop doing a pretty good job in defending against potentially weird stuff. I think the king is like really safe there and it's gonna do like e4, e5 maybe. Closing that bishop if needed. Okay, maybe no need to go e4, but felt like we need to get some counterplay. But I mean, you don't really need to force the issue that much at this point since we're already up so much material. Just need to trade pieces and that's like pretty much it. Let's do queen g4, hitting the pawn and keeping queen h3 ideas. Also consider e5, but for that's a little bit unnecessary. I would actually really like to force a queen trade. I'm guessing opponent will play this move, so I'm gonna play d3, opening up my bishop and preparing to meet knight e5 with queen h3, which is actually gonna be forcing a queen trade. Which is basically game over since we are already up a full rook. I thought we were actually up more. Only a full rook. That's still okay though. <laughs> so opponent castle instead of knight e5. Just do knight e2, knight f3. Bringing the knight over. I'm still planning to go queen h3. I'm basically behind in development because I had to waste time uh, collecting his pieces. <laughs> That's sort of what happened. Long story short, <laughs> going knight c4, hitting the queen, hitting the bishop, maybe e5 ideas. Queen c5 I actually like before. Yeah, just hitting the queen, maybe e5 ideas after he moves it. Just go for the wombo combo. Literally every piece <laughs> of my opponent is under attack after this move. Okay, so we see queen b5, I could go a4, I could just collect. Collect the bishop, I did take one c7. Anything wins at this point, but... I think just because we're getting closer to his king, it's perhaps a little bit better. Thinking about this with knight d6, but it's like a bit unnecessary. So I'm just gonna be playing queen g3 or even queen h2. Queen g3, some knight h5, potentially annoying. So prefer this move, also cutting the file. So queen h2 achieves the same goal as queen g3, except we don't run into any like knight h5 sort of nonsense, even though I'm pretty sure that was also completely winning for me. I play c5, but uh, yeah, I could just take, could play rook b1, could go a4. I think I like a4, queen b4, bishop d2. Queen's actually getting trapped there, and we're just making insane amount of progress on that side. Like queen a6, b5, just trapping the queen anyways. Can't go to c6 because my bishop covers it, and that is pretty much gonna be winning the queen. Yeah, just going bishop to d2. Queen has no squares. Literally everything is covered and the b2 one as well. When it presses, it finds the resign button, so. Get a game. Getting the white piece is gonna be trying out another King's Indian attack. And when they're playing with b6, if you wanna like really punish that, you could go e4 and get back into the open games. Against this, I think we're gonna be sticking with a normal play. Just trying to keep it as thematic as we can. Not really going for like sort of most ambitious moves in the opening at times just trying to get a position where we basically get pretty much the same pawn structure and yeah just pushing it with e4 knight e2 gonna go rook e1 we actually get the pawn to e5 so i think we're getting exactly the structure that we are looking for and opponent goes for the f6 break pretty early though and i think this actually loses a pawn after takes and rook takes on e6 so he was supposed to wait with that a bit but it's a pity we didn't get more maneuvering around just collecting the pawn immediately like that but i guess we kind of had to go for it taking the free juicer and perhaps going knight f1 slash knight b3 next not sure yet guess knight f1 knight on b3 looks kind of odd 
Okay, so knight c5 hitting the rook. I think we're just gonna go all the way back. And then maybe knight b3 makes sense inviting a trade. I think that's doable. Actually, next I would have liked to push d4, gaining a tempo. But now it's actually no, no longer working because of his last move that's controlling it for the second time. And if I play c3, then pawn on d3 drops. So that's not really an option. I'm gonna go knight b3 and in case he goes back, we play d4. If he doesn't, maybe we take. Maybe we play d4 then. If it takes, we're happy, opening up the rook. This is definitely the way to go. And just waiting to see what my opponent has in mind. On rook e8, could trade that. Uh, I think I'm just gonna start by taking. Not sure that was such a clever idea, but it felt pretty natural. And then just playing c3, sort of restricting the bishop. And yeah, next up, finish development. Connect rooks with queen d2, that would be really nice we're up a pawn so even better <laughs> you will see queen d7 and just gonna develop my bishop controlling the e5 square expecting rook e1 queen e1 and then queen d2 rook e1 just trading a lot of pieces and getting him into an end game where we have an extra pawn that is generally the easiest way to convert this kind of positions you don't really need to go for any sort of fancy tactics just by playing solid moves and uh, winning the piece when you can <laughs> this is also helpful generally when you see a double attack uh, you can go for it <laughs> collecting the best job and rook b8 just go queen a6 queen is escaping could also take the pawns as well of course probably taking the pawn yeah collecting the c7 one he can't really take on b2 because he has issues with the back rank and i think this one is uh, in the bag already so expecting rook b2 and uh we collect the rook with checkmate not gonna pre-move it though that would be a pretty risky pre-move so this is big flat maybe expecting rook c8 and against rook c8 perhaps bishop h3 looks interesting just hitting the rook and uh, trying to fight for the yeah for the back ranker, can I take my bishop because of the e8 square and has to go like in the corner, but then it's like rook e8 combined with bishop d7, so that's uh, pretty scary for my opponent. Yeah, it's like supposed to go in the corner or like f8, passive square, then bishop d6, collecting everything. Okay, collecting the rook, threatening to mate. And by the way, we haven't gone below starting time, which is pretty funny. It's not usually the case, but... Uh, it's nice that it happens occasionally, so managed to get uh, this one in. Thanks a lot for making it this far into the video, and in case you're looking for more episodes from the same series, make sure to click one of the videos that will appear on the screen. So with that being said, I'd like to thank you for watching, and I'll see you around on the channel. Take care.